In this video, we're going to be looking at the procedures for calculating a two-sample test statistic for a mean. We're going to be focusing our attention in section 13.1, and we're going to build on the example that we talked about in class about calcium and blood pressure and to see how that test statistic is calculated. So uh, the page in your book that you want to be on is page 788, and you want to find the box that says two sample T procedures. It would be good for you to make a note of the two formulas that are in there, one for a confidence interval and the other for a two sample T statistic, and that's the one that we're going to focus on right now. Uh, we're going to walk through the calculation on the facing page, which is page 789. I'm going to focus on what you have to write down uh, to earn credit. <clears throat> so yesterday we uh, talked about this particular question as being, uh, you know, does calcium lower the systolic blood pressure of the test subjects? And so if you recall, we had two uh, samples, one for a group of 10 men who were all taking a calcium supplement and one for a group of 11 men who were taking a placebo. And so what we're going to try to do now is just see how we would find the test statistic. The summary statistics are printed for you on page uh, 783. So we're going to be using those numbers that are in the middle of the example box to sort of see where each one goes. It's a very scary looking t-statistic formula, but it's actually not that bad. Notice that at the top of uh, the equation for t, it just says x1 bar minus x2 bar. So really all we're doing on the top there is we're taking the difference between the, um, the two sample means. And then in the denominator we're using the standard error. And the standard error for a test statistic of this type is S1 squared divided by N1 plus S2 squared divided by N2. And if you'll notice on your purple sheet, this is actually given to you as the standard deviation of statistic for a two-sample mean. So you might pull your formula sheet out and notice that they write the same formula, but they put sigmas in place of the s's, where we would use sample data since we don't know what sigma is. So on your test or on an assessment, this is the first thing I would look for, that you'd identify that you're going to have a two-sample t-test and that you would write this formula in this form. Because basically what you're doing is you're saying, this is the procedure that I'm going to use. Then notice that next to that, all they do is they put all the numbers in their proper places. So they put in 5.000 and then negative uh, 0 0.273 across the top. And then across the bottom, they put in the corresponding standard deviations. So we have 8. 743 squared divided by its corresponding sample size, which is 10, and then 5.901 squared divided by 11, which is its, its corresponding sample size. Now at this point, if you set this up in this particular format, you're going to be able to go directly to the calculation um, without necessarily doing all the number crunching here, you've demonstrated that you know where all of the numbers ought to go. They get a t value of 1.604. Since we have the two data sets in this particular case, there's actually a way for us to calculate this directly. So what you should do is pause the video for a minute, go back a couple pages to the actual sets of data on page 783, enter those into your calculator, as list one and list two, and then when you've done that, go ahead and start the video again. Okay, so assuming that you have entered the data into your calculator, if you're using an 84, then what you want to do is go back to the stat menu, this time arrow across to tests, and you want to arrow down to what's called the two sample t test, that's number four. You're going to choose that. The input is the first thing it asks for. Do you have data or do you have statistics? In this case, we have data, so we choose that. And then tell the calculator which lists your data are in, and it doesn't matter which one's which. 
And then the frequency should both be set to ones because we only want to count each number one time. You need to set your um, hypothesis, your alternative hypothesis, as your next choice. In this particular case, we are testing the hypothesis that mu1 is greater than mu2. So you want to choose the option that says greater than mu2 and highlight that. Under where it says pooled, you're going to say no. And then you can either press calculate, which is going to give you a screen full of numbers, or draw, which is going to give you a picture, a sketch, including the p-value. So if you press calculate, you're going to get a whole screen full of information. Notice the t value that shows up on screen is 1.604, which is exactly what the book has. And so we could use this with the set of data to calculate that number to make sure we don't make an arithmetic error. Once you have the formula written with the numbers in place, you can go directly to this to avoid computation mistakes, and I, I'd encourage you to do that. The p-value is 0 0.0644, okay? The degrees of freedom, notice that it gives you, that's a decimal value, which might seem like a very odd thing, but it's about 15.6. And then if you scroll down, it gives you all the summary statistics that we have in the earlier table that you already have put into the formula. So at this particular p-value, please notice, you would not reject alpha either at the 0.05 or 0.01 level. You would fail to reject in both of those cases. Now one more thing uh, before we go on here. You might wonder about this degrees of freedom issue because you might say, where is this number coming from? Well, it's actually coming from a very scary looking formula, but one that's definitely worth uh, at least looking at. And that formula is found um, on page 792 if you want to turn there. And what it shows you is based on the standard deviation and the sample size for the two samples, it shows you how we can calculate the given degree of freedom. And in fact, if you look in the example that continues on page 793, they show you for the particular numbers we're working with, if you plug all those into the degrees of freedom, you're going to get 15.59, which is our same as our 15.6 that we just calculated. Since we're not going to focus on using the tables in the back of the book, I'm going to focus on having you use this information. All of this information that I have here on the screen is stuff that I would want to see you uh, record on your paper as part of your uh, work to substantiate what you decide to do with the null hypothesis. Okay? Um, so let's talk just briefly about how to access the two-sample t-test command on the Inspire. Because keep in mind, you're going to do the very same thing. If you want to enter this in, you've got two sets of data. Uh, the only thing that's going to be different is where you get that information, what you do with it. So you're going to press, once you have your list typed in, you're going to press statistics, number, uh, I'm sorry, menu, then statistics, and then you're going to go to, um, hold on a second. Stat tests, which is number seven and two sample t-test is number four. You're going to choose that. It's going to ask you, do you have data or do you have st uh, summary statistics? So you're going to, again, choose that. And then it's going to ask you the very same questions. It's going to ask you for where your lists are, what they're called, what the frequencies are, what the alternative hypothesis is. And it's going to ask you if your data are pooled, and you're going to say no. We're going to talk a little bit when everybody's back in class about what pooled uh, data, what pooled tests are, for the moment, we're just always going to defer to no on that question. So this is the basics about how you're going to calculate. You're still going to do the very same thing with your p-value that you always do. You're going to compare it to alpha to decide if you're going to reject your null hypothesis or not. So this is how you're going to walk through the calculator process.